Stray cats are running loose through a city alley. It's your job to rescue as many as you can. Nine Lives is a fast game of trading, bidding, and clever tactics. It's played over a series of rounds in which each player bids a card from her hand at the same time. High bids use special powers first, which can change the game in subtle ways. But low bids get first choice of cats to rescue. Score points by getting the majority of certain breeds, especially rare breeds, and try to avoid scratches. This is Nine Lives. To set up the game, shuffle all of the cat cards into a single deck. Deal 8 cards to each player. Take 3 cards at random from the deck and put them on the side of the play area. These will not actually be traded or used in play, but they do reference the rare breeds that will be valuable in play. Finally, take three cards out of the deck and put them face up in the center of the play area within reach of all players. This is referred to as the alley. Then each player chooses three cards from their own hands to start their kennels or collection of cards. These are face down at first and then revealed at the same time. If you've never played before, just go ahead and choose three random cards from your hand to start off your kennel. To begin a round, each player bids one card from her hand, face down. Once all players have placed their bids, all bids are revealed at the same time. If there are any powers on bid cards, they're resolved in order of bidding number, from highest to lowest. There are nine different powers across the deck. Each one allows you to make a special trade before the rescue phase sometimes allowing you to trade from an opponent's kennel, from their hand, or from the alley. Each is unique and has their own special restrictions. See each power for details. Once all players' powers have been resolved, hand each player a turn marker according to their bid number, from lowest to highest. Then move all bid cards into the alley in a general pile. It's an alley after all. These cards are now available for rescue. On your turn, you have two possible actions. You may simply take one card from the alley and add it to your kennel. In this case, the first player takes a calico from the alley and adds it to their kennel. Or instead, you may take any number of cards from the alley in exchange for an equal number from the kennel. In this case, I took two cards from the alley, so I have to put two cards from my kennel back into the alley. Once everyone has had a chance to rescue cats from the alley, turn in all your turn markers, and you're ready to begin a new round, beginning again with the bidding phase. The game lasts five rounds. After the fifth round, discard any remaining cards that are in the alley. Now you're ready to score. This is an example of the end of a three-player game. The cards in the center here are the rare breeds that we had set aside during the setup phase. You score one point for every card you have of a rare breed. So in this case, I'll score two points because I have two of those cards in my kennel. This player will score one point because she has one of those cards in her kennel. Now we can set that rare card aside. Looking at the next rare breed, we see that uh, I have two of that breed, so I'll get two points for that. No one else has that breed, so we can set aside that rare card now. Looking at the next rare breed, we see that the player to my right has one card of that breed, so she'll get one point. Player to my left has two cards of that breed and gets two points, so we can set aside that last rare card. Next, count the total number of scratches you have in your kennel. Whoever has the fewest total scratches in their kennel will score one point for each scratch they have in their kennel. In this case, I have the fewest with 13 scratches, so I'll score 13 points. Finally, count your cards and check to see if you have the most cards of a particular breed. If you tie with another player, that's okay. Whoever has the most of a breed will score points, according to this chart.
Starting with the player to my left, we'll score each breed one at a time. The player to my left has the three cards of this breed, and no one else has any cards of that breed, so effectively uh, that player has the majority. Uh, three cards scores five points, and we can set those cards aside. Checking the next breed, we find that I have the majority because I have two cards compared to one card, so I will score for that. The other player will just have to ignore that card and not score any points for it. I will score three points because I have two cards of that breed. Next, the player to my left has the majority in this breed with two cards and will score three points. The player to my right will just have to ignore their single card of that breed. Looking at the next breed, the player to my right has the majority, the player to my left does not, so the player to my left will uh, not score any points for that breed. Meanwhile, the player to my right, having three cards, will score five points for that breed. Next, the player to my left does not have the majority in this breed, the player to my right does with two cards. Having two cards means that the player to my right will score three points, the player to my left will not score any points for that breed. Looking at the next breed, I have the majority with two cards compared to everyone else's zero cards. With two cards, I will get three points for that breed. Looking at the next breed here, again, I have the only two cards of that breed and I will score again three points. And again, I have the only card of a breed, that's one card, that is one point. The player to my right is the only player that has cards in this breed and two cards means they'll get three points. And here's everyone's final score. Here you can see that the scratches are a huge influence over the final score. So as you play, try to avoid scratches so that you'll have the fewest, but also try to have just one fewer than the next player ahead of you so that you will get to maximize your final score for those scratches. And that's 9 lives. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. You can find this and many more games at danielsolis.com. Thank you. Thank you.